Today I'm joined by a very special guest. Jean Dres is an economist and a former member of the National Advisory Council when the UPA was in power, but someone who has tracked poverty in India for decades is regarded as perhaps the most credible voice on that issue. I appreciate you, Professor Dres, from joining me. Today we've seen, Professor, visuals of a number of migrants reaching a railway station in Mumbai, hoping train services will start, and then desperate to go home. There were lati charges from the police. How do you see the problem of migrant laborers, particularly in big cities? We saw that in Delhi two weeks ago and in Mumbai today. What makes them so angry and restless? Well, I think that the migrant workers have been badly treated throughout this crisis and uh, much more can and should be done to help them now, uh, whether it is by providing shelter or food or even, I would say, helping some of them to go home in a safe and dignified manner. And one reason why it is proving so difficult is that there was virtually nothing for them in the relief package announced uh, a couple of weeks ago by the finance minister. But I would also like to add, Rajdeep, that you see the migrant workers are on the TV screens, so we can see their distress. But I think that there are other groups that are also extremely vulnerable at this time, uh, no less than the migrant workers, but we don't see them. And I would mention two in particular. One is poor households without a ration card. Mm -hmm. And there are millions, if not actually tens of millions of them. And they are now at risk of hunger. They are not on the TV screens because they are deprived in dispersed uh, locations, in the villages. But uh, they also need action urgently. And the other group uh, that is very vulnerable, of course, is the elderly, uh, because in a time of crisis, uh, and of course, in particular, a crisis of this sort where the elderly are, are most exposed to this virus. But in any case, in any time of crisis, the tendency in the family is to protect the children and the young for understandable reasons. And the el el elderly tend to be neglected. And again, in the relief package of the finance minister, there was, there was virtually nothing for that group uh, except 3,000 crores for pensions. Even though it was really easy, it would have been very easy to provide a much larger allocations uh, for pensions. Can I start with one of the groups that you mentioned? And I think that's a significant group. I want to wake up my TV audiences to those poor who don't have ration cards and how they're dealing with a lockdown. We are told many of these protesters didn't have ration cards. Now that's the responsibility of the state government as much as it is of the local self-government. Does one, in a sense, the government of India in its original relief package gave an additional 5 kgs food grain rice and wheat per ration card. What happens to those who don't have ration cards is a problem that's coming to light. How do you deal with that? I think that the doubling of food rations for people who have, who have a ration card is welcome. Uh, we have always supported that. But of course, it doesn't do anything for those who don't have a ration card. And just put yourself in the shoes or the chapels of a poor person who is on the brink of hunger and who doesn't have a ration card. And they see their neighbor now getting double rations and they are still getting nothing. And that, of course, is a great injustice. And that means that is one reason why something has to be done for those without ration cards. Now, fortunately, the country has humongous excess food grain stocks. I think you know that. Yes. The food stocks of the Food Corporation of India in April uh, were around 77 million tons, as opposed to buffer norms of 21 million tons. So there are enormous excess food stocks that may even grow in the next few weeks because the Rabi procurement is uh, on and may bring another 30 or 35 million tons in the FCI go-downs. So I believe that the easiest way to help poor people without ration cars would be to uh, give them at the very least emergency ration cars for a period of six months or one year and provide them with food rations. In fact, you could even argue, I believe, for universalizing the PDS, the public distribution system, for a period of one year in rural areas and urban slums and it would only take an extra food allocation 
of about 20 million tons, which is a fraction of the excess stocks. So it's very feasible, and uh, that is the only safe, fail-safe way of ensuring that nobody goes, goes hungry. You've given us one big solution, which I hope the government will look at seriously, both state and center. You're saying universalize the PDS scheme. Just open up, in a sense, the granaries of this country at a time like this. And you believe that is much more necessary at the moment than this debate, presumably, on a universal basic income. Do we keep that debate for another day, focus at the moment on providing universal PDS to the poor of this country? Look, UBI is not feasible right now because the system is not in place. We can discuss it again after the crisis is, is over. But right now it's not in place. The PDS is in place. We have huge food grain stocks. Mm -hmm. So let's use them and deliver food without delay to those who are vulnerable to hunger. It's not rocket science. And the reason for universalizing Rajdeep is that at this time, there are all sorts of people who are food insecure uh, in this particular situation and earlier perhaps they were not particularly poor but suddenly they have lost their job and their livelihood and they require support and there is no time or no means of doing a fresh survey to identify who needs assistance and who doesn't and therefore the best way forward at the very least I would say in the poorer states would be to universalize and it does not require huge resources because in the poorer states the PDS is already reasonably close to universalization um, under the National Food Security Act. Do you, do you believe, Jodhrez, that the urban poor in particular have been neglected? Manrega was designed to address unemployment, especially among the rural poor. But what we are finding, those on construction sites in urban areas, those in informal sector, COVID-19 and the lockdown has made the urban poor more vulnerable. They are unable to get jobs and they are unable to go home, uh, unable to get jobs in the cities and unable now also to go back home to their villages. They remain the most vulnerable. Yes, I think that is correct. I think in ordinary times, the urban poor are not as vulnerable as the rural poor because there's always something you can do in the urban areas, if it's, even if it's only pulling a rickshaw or selling some tea. So there are various fallback activities and the general level of poverty in any case is not as high as in rural areas. But now we have a situation of mass unemployment among the urban poor and that is why I have suggested universalizing the PDS not only, not only in the rural areas but also in the urban slums. In addition of course to also cash transfer schemes of the sort that have been initiated by the finance minister but that have to be done on a much larger scale.